Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've watched the previous videos, you may be wondering what is he talking about when he says absolute magnitude and apparent magnitude? Well, let's try to clarify that because now I think we're ready and so we can also use it in our future videos. So what do we mean by absolute magnitude? Well, first let's take a look at what we mean by apparent magnitude. And first let's talk about the magnitude scale period. So the magnitude scale is a means of determining the luminosity or the brightness of an object. It turns out the smaller the number, the brighter, the bigger number, the less bright or the dimmer it is. So in other words, a zero, an object with magnitude zero brightness is brighter than an object with magnitude two. Or negative two is brighter than zero. Or negative four is brighter than negative two. To the left on the scale is brighter, to the right of the scale is dimmer. Now objects that have a magnitude that are dimmer than 6, like 7, 8 or 9, those things cannot be seen with the naked eye. You are going to need a telescope or some binoculars or something to be able to see objects that are dimmer than a 6. And to see an object with magnitude 6 brightness, and we talk about apparent brightness, and we'll show you in just a moment what we mean by apparent brightness, well you need to be in a place where it's pretty dark with no city lights, otherwise you're not even going to be able to see a 6. Some examples, Polaris has a magnitude of about 2. Regal, which is the brightest star in the constellation Orion, has a magnitude of almost down to 0. Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, has a magnitude of about minus 1.4. Jupiter at its brightest is about a minus 2.6. And Venus at its brightest is about a minus 4.5. So you can see that these are brighter objects and these are dimmer objects. Now, as a comparison, a magnitude 1 object is two and a half times brighter than a magnitude 2 object, so that's what the scale is. Each number increases the brightness or decreases the brightness by a factor of 2.5. So a 1 magnitude 1 is two and a half times brighter than a magnitude 2. A magnitude 2 is two and a half times brighter than a magnitude 3. So therefore, a magnitude 1 is 2.5 raised to the second power brighter, which is 2.5 squared is 6.25, so it's 6.25 times brighter than a magnitude 3. The actual number used is actually 2.512, so if you have a calculator handy, you actually want to put 2.512 there instead of 2.5, we just use 2.5 as an approximation. So let's say there's two objects, one object is a negative 2, the other object is a positive 3. So when you take the difference between negative 2 and positive 3, that's a, that's a difference of 5 magnitudes. Again, negative 2 would be brighter than a positive 3. But how much brighter? Well, take the number 2.512 and raise it to the difference in magnitudes. The difference between negative 2 and a positive 3, well, the difference, that's 5. In other words, sometimes we write as delta m for the difference in magnitudes, that's equal to 3 minus a minus 2, which is 3 plus 2, which is 5, and that goes in as the exponent. So 2.512 raised to the fifth power is actually equal to 100. So when two objects differ by magnitude of 5, like the difference between 0 and 5, or negative 1 and 4, or negative 2 and 3, or negative 3 and 2, if the difference is 5, that means that the brighter object is 100 times brighter than the dimmer object, as seen from the Earth, and that's the key. So apparent magnitude means as seen from the Earth. We take a telescope, we look at it, we take pictures or we take measurements of the brightness of the object using different filters, and from that we can tell it is this bright, and that's called the apparent magnitude. How bright it appears to us as seen from the Earth, and that's where the word apparent comes from. But what about absolute magnitude? Because that's what we're here to find out. Well, the absolute magnitude is equal to the apparent magnitude if the object was placed at a particular distance, at some standard distance. The key is, what is that standard distance? And the standard distance is 10 parsecs. You may say, what in the world is a parsec? Well, one parsec is 3.26 light years. Let me write that down. So one parsec, PC, is equal to 3.26 light years. So remember that light years is the distance light travels in a year. So one parsec and we typically write PC with small p and small c, so let me write it like this. One parsec, parsec, is equal to 3.26 light years, so 10 parsecs 
is 32.6 light years. So if we take an object, like a star, and we place it 10 parsecs away from us, of course, we can't physically move the star there. We have to imagine what it would be like if the star was that far. And then we were able to look at it and measure its brightness. That would be the absolute brightness. So for now, it's good enough to realize, let's say there's a star that is closer to us than, than 10 parsecs. And let's say we measure its apparent brightness. It happens to be 2. Now we take that star in our imagination and we place it 10 parsecs away, 32.6 light years. How bright would it appear then? Let's say that number would then be 6. It would be dimmer because now it's farther away. These are just numbers so we can play with them. And so now we realize, okay, if I were to look at it with my telescope, if it was this far away, it would appear as a 6 magnitude 6. That means that's the absolute magnitude of that star. So even though it appears this bright, if we it, if it were to place it this far away, it would only appear that bright, and that's called the absolute magnitude. What if we had a star that was much further away, like right here, and its apparent magnitude is a 1? So it's really far away, and its apparent magnitude is 1. That means it's a pretty bright star. So what would happen if we then took that star and moved it here, 10 parsecs away? It would then appear brighter than it would be if it's in its actual position. So it would appear brighter. Of course, we can't physically move the star there, but how bright would it appear if we moved it there in our imagination? So then we would calculate and go, oh, look, it would be a minus 5. Well, that becomes the absolute magnitude of that star. It, that's how bright it would be if it was 10 parsecs away. So you can see that a minus 5, of course, is much brighter than a 6. Now, you couldn't tell by just looking at the stars because this star would appear as a magnitude 2. This star would appear as a magnitude 1, and you say, hey, this star appears two and a half times brighter than this because the difference is one magnitude. So it's not a lot brighter in the sky, just a little bit brighter. But of course, actually, this star is way brighter than this one. The absolute brightness tells you how bright it actually is. And so again, we move both stars to a distance of 10 parsecs away, and then we say, well, how bright would it appear? That becomes the absolute brightness. And now we can compare two stars to each other. And now you can have a true comparison between them. This is the apparent brightness. This is the actual brightness. And so now, basically, it, we can compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Because now they're both placed at the same distance, 10 parsecs. How bright would they appear at that point? That's the absolute brightness. And so now you realize the difference between absolute magnitude and a pair of magnitude, and that is how it's done. What would the sun be? The sun apparent magnitude is a minus 26 and a half. So it's really bright, of course. <laughs> so it would be way over that way because it's really close. Now, if we were to put the sun over here, it would be a plus 4.85, almost a plus 5. So if our sun was placed 10 parsecs away, you could barely see it under good circumstances. So our sun is not particularly a bright star. It's a little bit bigger than the average, but not a particularly bright star. Sort of like um, Yogi Bear. Bear. <laughs> not the whole, not the hot, yeah, it's kind of like a little bit better than average. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Mother's Day. Yep. Oh. That's what fun.